make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear services to you. And we provide services to folks in Hudson, and currently I'd say we probably have about 90 Bay Path service clients that we, we, help, we help out with. But my agency, what I really wanted to do today is just talk a little bit about, people hear about home care, and sometimes there's fear, you know, and what kind of people are coming into my home and that sort of thing. And um, I want to talk a little bit Especially about- Especially those big, the big, the big- The big bears. Yeah, yeah, the big bears. Yeah, 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 you're exactly right. But Bay Path, Bay Path, for example, has very, very high standards in terms of who they contract with. So they make sure that we're licensed, we're insured, we're bonded. And my agency actually put, this year, um, is accredited by the Home Care Alliance of Massachusetts, which is really the first accreditation for home care agencies in Massachusetts. So things are progressing in terms of raising the bar, in terms of providing services so that, you know, you know with some level of confidence that if you're getting service through Bay Path, that, you know, all of the liability falls on the agencies that they hire. So when I put an aid into your home, you know, it is my job to manage that aid. It's in my job to manage the service plan. It's my job to make sure that I connect you with somebody that you enjoy. I think that that's something else that's really important, is that you don't have to feel stuck. I mean, I am a service organization. That's how I view what I do. So when I say, geez, Mr. Jones, it's nice to meet you and that sort of thing, and I'm helping you with, you know, your personal care or whether it's homemaking or that sort of thing, and, you know, maybe I look like, you know, your ex-wife or something. I don't know. Or maybe your wife says that I look like your ex-wife and it's just not working out. <laughs> so, so you can call on the base path your case manager or you can call my office and you can say, you know what, you know, Gail, Gail is just not working out. I'd really like it very much if you could provide somebody else for me because she just isn't, you know, we're just not a match. And so I think that's another important thing is you don't have to feel stuck just because you get assigned an age, I mean an aid, whether it's a companion or a personal care aid or a home health aid. I mean, this is somebody that you need to feel comfortable with. So if somebody's helping you with a shower, um, you need to feel confident that that person has the skills to make you feel confident when you're in the shower. So I think that it's important that you know that our aids are, we go through an extensive screening and interviewing process, we go through a competency exam, and everybody is experienced. We don't hire experienced age, age, age. We, um, and I think the other thing is that um, everybody speaks English, we have a very diverse um, staff. So in some cases we have um, folks that may speak Portuguese as well, or you know Russian, and I think that's a benefit. But we really, really try to match you up with somebody that's best suited for you. Um, the aides themselves, uh, we, we check elder abuse laws, the elder abuse registries, um, the certified nurses aid registry. We do quarry backgrounds. And if somebody hasn't lived in Massachusetts for a year, we'll do a nationwide or, or regionwide background check, as well as motor vehicle check. So I'll tell you, you know, I mean, the agency is my agency. And I take pride in what I do, so I treat every client that we have as though you're my own mom or dad, and that's what's important to me. So it's, if I, if, if it's very important that we do anything and everything that we can to ensure that the people we're bringing into your home are safe, comfortable people and people that are going to do what they're there to do for you. And I, my relationship with Bayfath is very important, so I need to ensure, too, that I, I meet their requirements. Um, I think that the other thing that we do is that there's there's a program that, that's called telephony. And the aides call it, they call in when they get to your house and they call out when they get to your house. So you can be sure that we know where the aides are and that they're on time. If there's going to be a snowstorm, we can call you and say, hey, we might coordinate a different day or time so you don't lose your service for a week. So that case management, that part of field work and making sure the aides are where they're supposed to be on time and that, oh, one more thing, they're consistent. So, Mr. Jones, if I if I assign somebody to your your case, I want to make sure that somebody's with you every week, so you don't know, you know, you know who's coming through that door every single day. Those are things that I hear our clients talk about. That's very important to them, and I think um, Mr. Bergeron wanted to make sure that, from a home care perspective, that you understand that 
All home care agencies are not created equal, but most of us try to do as best we can to make sure that you're safe and confident and comfortable in your home. And, and by the way, do all home care agencies do nur nurses as well as home health aides as well as home makers? Is that pretty yeah, common? Well, it depends. Like with my work with Baypath, we do have a skilled, we do do skilled nursing. So when Kathleen talked about the Philips Med machines, the interesting thing, they talk about how they talk to you, but they talk to us too. So for example, if your med machine is running out, um, the, the med machine will call us electronically and say, hey, you know, not Gail, but hey guys, you know, Mr. Jones's med machine has three days left. I want to make sure that he's scheduled and we get back out there. But, you know, not all agencies provide all services, but Baypath has a good handle on who provides what services. And that's really how they assign your case. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll figure that out and figure out what's best. But we provide skilled nursing um, as well as homemakers and companions, personal care attendants. Um, for the most part, you know, you know, we provide whatever services that are available through Baypath. And as a private duty agency, I think the other thing that's important is that, you know, we also refer to Baypath. I think it's my obligation as a private duty agency to make sure that you, as community folks, get whatever services that you're entitled to. And so I think that it's important that we open the case with Baypath all the time. If you're looking for the first time for for case for services, I'll ask you, hey, did you call Baypath? You know. Call there and ask them to come talk to you because they might be able, you might be able to get services through them. And we do that as a standard practice because it's important, you know. Uh, what else are there? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, now I, was, I was hoping to get that Kathleen Burke could come back and just yeah. tell us a little bit about what the actual pro the home care programs are. We kind of want to concentrate on the home care programs and the programs for which you may you, there may be a benefit that you can apply for. Okay, so we have um, three different programs at BayCAP. Um, the one up there now is the Community Choices Program, and this is for people who are on Mass Health. Um, whether they, you know, apply and are already on Mass Health, or if they need the frail elder waiver, which I think we're gonna. We're gonna talk, talk about a few, for a few minutes, right? Yeah. We've talked about the frail elder waiver before, but that's the one that's so big that we really want to kind of emphasize it. Um, so. This client is someone who has the need uh, for services daily. Um, so um, a lot of times this person will have an aide come, you know, in the morning to help them get up and get bathed and dressed and ready for the day. And then um, a lot of times they'll have an aide come in the middle of the day and, um, you know, help prepare some lunch for them, maybe do some laundry. And then they'll have someone come again at night. Um, so. That's, that's kind of a typical choices care plan um, for what we have. And the other program we have is um, the ECOP program, which stands for Enhanced Community Options Program. This is for people who are not eligible for mass health. Um, even with the waiver, they just have too many assets and they cannot get on mass health, but they still need more services. Um, we can put them on this program, and that way they're able to get uh, six or seven hours of service a week. So that can be maybe um, you know two showers a week, because that's about an hour, and then four hours um, for anything else that's needed, like um, cleaning and grocery shopping and laundry and things like that. And then the, the other last program is the basic home care program. This is what most of our clients are on. This is about uh, three hours of service a week. So some people use three hours for all homemaking. So that's cleaning and, and um, laundry and meal preparation and things like that. Some people will use one hour um, for help with the showers. So they have one shower a week and then they have the, the uh, two hours for homemaking. Um, but you know that can be discussed with your case manager and um, depending on what you need and what you want, the case manager will come up with a care plan that works for you. Uh, Kathy, you said, well, I want to, let's flip back for, flip back for a second. I know that uh, Mass Health is separate in terms of the rules to, to qualify. If you're if applying for either of the other programs for basic home care or for EPOP for enhanced community options, mm -hmm. what are the income requirements or the asset requirements? How does that work? Um, assets are not looked at for either of those programs. Um, so you can have any, any kind of health insurance, Medicare, private insurance, and the only thing that's looked at is your monthly income, um, and that's just to determine what your co-payment will be. And as I said, that's a, on a sliding scale, so um, I think the cheapest co-payment we have is uh, $9 a month. 
but it goes up depending on what your monthly income is. And for purposes of comparison, the typical home care person who is going in is charging how much per hour, or you're paying how much per hour? Um, well, three hours a week of service, I think, equals it out to about $300. Um, so then that's $300 a week. Did, that, did I answer your question? So it's $100 an hour? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you're saying, uh, yes. wow. I'm <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Just, just check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that you, you, you can provide funding above the three hundred dollars per month to right. provide for these for folks. For a basic right, care right. And if, and if, and if my my typically in the market that you can expect that folks are charging twenty twenty two dollars an hour something like that. Mm -hmm. So you're probably talking about like you know once again fifteen hours a week or a month you know, a, a reasonable number of hours a month mm -hmm. to help out. Now, in either of those programs, the total number of hours that are available are fairly small, um, which is why we're going to step back to the frail of the waiver for a while. Now, now, let me just talk for a few minutes and talk about